Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the eighth installment of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make cool maps for your role-playing games. Before we dive in, I'd just like to give you one more reminder. If you're watching the show via the iTunes Music Store, just take a moment and leave a review, whether you like the show as it is or if there's something you'd like me to change. Positive feedback on the show will do more than almost anything else to bring in new viewers. So if you'd like to help me spread the love, leave a review. It'll really help out. Now let's get started. This week we're going to look at a really cool technique for adding buildings to your map. This is another one of my favorite techniques because it's very flexible. You can combine it with a lot of different filters and layer styles to get a lot of different looks. So it works well with a wide variety of map styles. Now if you've watched the show in the past, you can probably guess how we're going to start this technique out. We're going to come over here to the Layers palette down to the Add, Fill, or Adjustment Layer button. You've seen me do this a lot of times now. Going to click on that and come up to Solid Color. That is going to create a layer of solid color with a layer mask attached to it already. Normally, I would stick with this black because black is the color that I'm going to want to use on the final map. But it's going to make some of the explanation I do in a minute a little harder to understand, I think. So for right now, I'm just going to pick uh, this dark red and hit OK. Now I want to hide this, so I'm just going to hit Control i to invert the layer mask from black to white, and that hides all of that red color. Now I'm going to zoom in to this section of the map here, just these uh, blocks here. Now you would think that we would want to use the rectangle tool in order to add in rectangular shapes, but there is a problem with using the rectangle tool. I'm going to go ahead and select it here. I'm going to come over here to the shape tools, select rectangle. Uh, you want to make sure that your shape tool, whichever one you're using, is set to fill pixels and that your foreground color is set to white. That is going to fill whatever shape we make with white here on this layer mask and reveal the red color that we have on this layer. When we use the rectangle tool, the problem is that it only creates it at this right angle to the screen. If you want to change that angle, you would have to use the marquee tool to select it and then use the transform function to rotate it, and that's really just a pain, especially when you're adding in a lot of buildings. We don't want to have to do that. What we can do is cheat. We're going to use the line tool instead. But instead of using it at its default uh, low number, we're going to turn it way up to about 25. And just like that, we can now add in rectangles at any angle that we want, just like that. And now you see that you can use the line tool set up like this to very quickly just go through and fill up a whole block with a lot of different buildings. Oops. Just like that. Uh, you can vary the weight by using the left and right bracket keys to decrease or increase the weight of the line that you're creating. So you can add little sections like that. You can also switch the color to black, hit the X, and uh, cut sections out if you want to kind of vary it that way. Just like that. Now you might be able to guess why I chose red for the solid color layer for this explanation instead of black. If I'd had black here, like this, uh, I would have to be using white on my layer mask to reveal black and then black to take the black away, which can get kind of uh, hinky unless you're really used to it. So uh, a lot of times it helps to pick a different color for something like this until you're done. So we'll just switch back to our red for now. Now, using our line tool works really well for adding in uh, just a few buildings or for adding in odd buildings here and there at weird angles. If you want to add in an entire block of buildings very quickly, you can do that by using the pen tool first. So I'm going to select the pen. Uh, for this, we're going to have it set for paths and add to path area initially. So I'm just going to go through and fill in an entire block just like this and another one over here, just like this. Nice thing about using the pads here is you can use the selection tool, the direct selection tool here, and move points around until they're exactly where you want them. 
just like that. Once you have these outer shapes built, get the pen tool again, and now set it to subtract from path area and add in a second rectangle inside. One here and one here. And again, because you've used paths here, you can just grab the selection tool and move them around. Get them exactly the way you want. Now when you've got it set up just as you like, head over to the paths palette. You want to make sure that you have white selected as your foreground color and click on the fill path with foreground color button at the bottom of the paths palette. That fills the outer shapes that were set to add to path area with white and then subtracts that white away from the sections that we created with the subtract from path area pin. Now we can just click away from that work path, come back over here to our layers palette, grab our line tool again, excuse me, our line tool again, there we go, set the color to black, take the weight down to about, oh, five pixels, and now we can just very quickly, oh, make sure that is set to fill pixels, and now we can just very quickly chop out uh, a whole mess of buildings in this block in no time flat. And then again here on this block. Just like that. And again, uh, you can go through and break up some of these buildings with the line tool or the pen tool, however you want to do it. I like using the line for this just to kind of cut sections out, switch to white, add little sections back on, just to kind of vary the look a little bit. You can spend as much or as little time working on that as you want. Now, once you've got all of these buildings added in that you like, I'm going to go ahead and switch this color back over to the black that we want it to be finally, just like that. Uh, that's looking a little dark, so I'm going to reduce the opacity. There we go, the opacity for the whole layer. Oh, maybe down to about 70, 80. Right about 75 looks good. Now these uh, shapes are still looking kind of sharp. I want to soften them up a little bit. So I'm going to come up here to Filter, down to Artistic, and over to Cutout. and just kind of play with the settings a little bit until we can see the corners kind of uh, smooth out a little maybe some of the edges roughen up a bit right there looks pretty good and right there you can see we filled in most of three blocks uh, full of buildings in a lot less time than it would have taken us uh, going in and drawing them individually with the brush when you really get going with the pen and line tools, uh, you can add in a lot of buildings in no time. That's going to do it for this week. Next week, we'll add some text to our map before we begin putting on the finishing touches. Don't forget to stop by zombienirvana.com for this week's show notes, my weekly Photoshop tip, or if you have any questions, comments, or requests. Thanks for listening, and happy mapping! Will you go? Lassie, will you go?